Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial and today we're going to be working on a quick little VJ loop that I discovered the other day or this morning so let's dive right in. So delete most of the defaults, let's leave the default cube this time around. Let's go ahead and go to the front cam, let's make it a little bit wider and let's make it, oops, scale, scale it up on the Z axis a little bit. You can hold control, scale up, oops. So you got, um, just looking at the size, it's really kind of up to you. Let's, <clears throat> let's move the Y by eight in terms of the dimensions. You can always clean up the dimensions as well if you want it to be like a little perfect, when you press N, open this up. So three, eight, three, just move that, move that a little bit. I'm gonna work, we're gonna start with the modeling first and foremost. So we're gonna go ahead and delete the two faces on the side. You access edit mode by pressing tab, do that. Let's go ahead and enter the modifier. Let's, <clears throat> First and foremost, let's go ahead and do a simple deform. Let's twist it on t t t the Y axis by around, let's do, let's leave it at 45. Let's go ahead and, and press tab again to enter the edit mode. Right click, subdivide, subdivide, subdivide. There we go, we got a little something here. Now, what we're gonna do is, <coughs> we're gonna also duplicate it just to make the loop a little bit easier. And when I say duplicate, we're gonna go ahead and dive into the, mo the modify tab in the mirror. And what you need to do is create an empty now on the plane axis, move up a little bit, move on the Y axis to the edge of the original shape. So now what you're gonna do is go back in here, go on the mirror, click mirror object, empty. And we're gonna have that on the Y axis. So now you can kind of see we have a completed kind of like loop thing here. It's a bit longer than before, but it's 16 meters. <clears throat> Let's go over to the front. Click camera, we're gonna pull a camera in here. We're just gonna quickly animate it through one edge to the next. So like we did before, I'm gonna keyframe. So Enter a single keyframe in the Y, move it all the way down to the end. Let's do 16. You can kind of see it's at the end. Right click, enter a single keyframe. Go right here. Now, if we were to go ahead and split by right clicking this, now view camera. Now, if we click play, you can see we're kind of just going through it all. Um, we want to animate the rotation and this is just a kind of test we want to see how how much like twisty you want it here so we're going to rotate it on the y-axis so just enter single keyframe at zero go to the end let's do 360 enter another single keyframe and you can kind of see we have something kind of happening from here it's up to your own personal taste you could do Let's just do it a little bit more. I'm gonna make mine 90 degrees. Now, what we're gonna do is we need to make it kind of extend now. The way I like to do that is let's take our cube and let's press M over here in the scene, create a new collection. Call that collection loop or whatever you wanna call it. Now, come over here back into our, our workspace and Press Shift A, go down to Collection Instance, Loop, drag it on over, and drag it on over one more time, Shift D. Now if you press Shift R, sometimes you can duplicate it. So to duplicate, essentially you would do Shift D, move it on the Y axis, hold Control, so you can get it nice and perfect. And then essentially once you kind of make that perfect uh, connection, just keep hitting shift R to repeat that action. Now, if 
click it play, you can kind of see here. Let's go to our camera. Let's go to our viewport display. Let's increase that so we just see what we need to see. See, we gotta have something going on here. So the second part is the lights and the material. So we're gonna mess around and make this thing start looking nice. Cause if you go to rendered, look at it, it's dark. So for the rendering, so we see it nice and nice. Go ahead and click this render properties, ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections. And let's rock with that for now. Go over to the environment settings, let's tune it down. Now, <clears throat> it's getting kind of dark in here. So I would say, let's start dropping some lights into there. So press shift A, you get a little point light. Let's just make this a little bit smaller so you can see what I'm doing here. Let's move that point light up into the center. And we're just gonna drag it in a little bit. And we're just gonna kinda eyeball it now. Just move it, move them around. And you could just shift R like I did last time to repeat. You only need about six lights. Each of those lights, we're gonna make them about 200 watts. It's gonna be real. Look a little bit nicer here. Click your, go into your, your collection. Select the cube. We're gonna go in and make another split. And we're gonna make, open up our shader editor. Let's drag this a little bit. Let's open this up. And what we're gonna do with our shader editor is we're gonna turn down the roughness. We're gonna go ahead and turn up the metallic. And you can kind of see we have something going on here. And what you wanna do is we get a little more playful with it here. So I'm gonna bump. down your normal shift a magic texture go ahead and put the color on the height for everyone that just wondered what did I just do we used an add-on called the node wrangler essentially some of you may have it some of you may not go into your preferences go into add-ons and then go ahead and just type in node wrangler and when you press Control T, you're gonna be able to access that mapping. So I'm just gonna repeat that real quick for everyone in the back. Select this texture, Control T. Let's pull our generated, oops, let's connect that. Let's pull our object connected to the vector. You can see we kind of have the animation going already. So a few more things we need to add here for me to make it look a little bit nicer. I like to mess around with some colors now. So let's go back to our light, our lighting setup here. Uh, let's bring in a nice dark green. Let's bring in a nice lighter green. We have our camera going through our lights. You may wonder, because they're not the same color. The loop was not gonna loop. Now, pay very close attention here. I'm gonna show you a little trick. Um, what you wanna do now is select your each of your lights. So you hold down control and click. Select the camera last. That's a very important part. You want to select that camera at last. You don't want to skip that step. Press control P, set parent to object. And what this will do is it'll make the lights move with the camera. Thus, when the loop ends, it starts like this and it ends exactly the same way. But you still get the lights kind of moving down the tunnel. So it looks interesting. 
And you can kind of see we have something going on here. And uh, honestly, from this point, if you're eager to render it, you can. I'm going to show you a little bit of extra stuff, a secret sauce. To bring a little bit of focal uh, depth of field to make it. So I like to test it out. So you can just test it zero. Just kind of drag it all in until you get something nice. If you want to see the center, you can. I like to make the out the close one focus. From here, go to color management. You can start playing around with some, some contrast levels, really up to you. Make it a little dark. And from there, we pretty much have it. So for anyone that still does not really render stuff out yet, you go over here to your, forget the name. Um, <laughs> you're gonna go ahead and open up encoding. I like to select, put it on high quality, switch it to MP4. And from there, you're pretty much good. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that render. Thank you once again for dropping by. If you have any suggestions or tips or tricks, feel free to drop them by in the comments below. See you guys.